Hey guys, uh, this is Andrew Bosley. I'm a freelance concept artist. I've been working in the video game industry for the last 10 years, and today we're going to continue Joseph's demo that he started with ZBrush, uh, talking about using 3D in concept design. Uh, I've worked with 3D for my entire career, but the advances and features that are available these days are really surpass the things that were available when I first started doing this stuff with 3D. You know, it was helpful in figuring out perspectives and quick layout and things like that, but I can create a lighting scenario and work with materials and all those sort of things put together really help establish a mood even before I've even touched my brush to the canvas. So it's a really, really great process, big fan of it, and excited to walk you through the process I go through and, and hope it'll be beneficial. So here we go. To start, Joseph provided me with a variety of passes from his 3D work uh, for me to use as a base for the concept. As he mentioned uh, in the previous part of this demo, he created everything uh, in ZBrush, took it to Keyshot using the uh, ZBrush to Keyshot bridge, and he rendered out a, a few different passes for me, and, and so I'm uh, going to be using mostly uh, uh, different passes that uh, just cover a variety of uh, local color changes to add some variety to the cityscape we're working on. If you look at any you know, cityscape out there in real life, you'll notice that all the buildings are built differently, have different materials and different colors and things like that. So uh, while I can't simulate the entire uh, variety of, of materials and colors that are out there in the real world. I wanted to take a couple different uh, passes here and, and provide a, a few different uh, color uh, directions for the buildings and material changes. Uh, so what I'm doing here is I have three different layers here with those different passes on each and uh, I am just using a layer mask to, uh, to kind of pull out those different colors. Ultimately, we're just going to really use about three. I'm going to do some uh, color balance to change uh, some of it, uh, but uh, we're just going to work with those, and then we're going to take some different uh, textures and uh, mess around with some stuff here. I obviously don't work this fast. Uh, in order to keep this uh, set of videos short, I sped this up to at times between uh, three times speed and six times speed. So uh, I wish I could say I was this fast here, but uh, no, I am not. So with the colors all sorted out here, at least the, the base local colors uh, sorted out the way I wanted to, I wanted to, to uh, bring in some textures. I had gathered some reference uh, uh, beforehand with some building facades, windows, and, and different treatments, and I'm going to bring those in. Before I do that, I wanted to add uh, some perspective lines. While the 3D here uh, is already... I created an, uh, an amazing scene. Uh, I need to, as I'm, you know, adding textures to this that are very geometric in nature. I need to make sure that those uh, fit uh, uh, properly in, in perspective as well, so that I'm not fighting against the scene that's already been built. Uh, so having those uh, perspective lines really, really helps with that. So then I bring in these different textures that I've got, grabbing again different materials, different uh, building types. And I used and created them all uh, as uh, smart layers, smart objects, and imported them into Photoshop that way. There's a lot of great things, uh, a lot of great features that, with those uh, smart objects that allows you to, to make modifications, transformations, and things that uh, after you apply them uh, and you decide you want to make some changes after that, you can go back in there and you haven't lost any of that information. It's really, really valuable. So I'm coming in here at close to normal speed, sort of, uh, for this, uh, for our first, these couple buildings that I'm going to be texturing or adding texture uh, photo elements to. Uh, and then we're going to speed up a little bit. But uh, after, you know, finding the placement that I like for these, I rasterize, you know, those smart objects. And then at that point, I can adjust the, the colors that I want to uh, I can already play around with the layer modes, which uh, for all of these textures, they end up being in the overlay mode. But 
uh, after rasterizing them, I can really mess around with them like I normally, you know, with like any other layer. Um, so it's a nice, uh, nice feature. The the smart object allows you to to make these changes uh, really, really easily to these uh, photo elements. Continue to adjust them if you need to in the future, as I'm doing here. Realizing that I wanted them shorter and less wide, I could come in and adjust those things even after I thought I was finished. So I'm rasterizing both of these, adjusting the layers, uh, saturation, and and uh, want to kind of knock them back so they're not too jarring in the scene. They don't draw too much attention to themselves. It's about the overall image, not about any of these individual textures, of course. So, uh, with a couple of these done here, I already prepared uh, some other textures uh, for most of the other buildings here. So we're going to add them now, like that. I decided as well. I wanted to to add a little bit more variety to these buildings. The concept of, for these buildings or for this uh, scene is involves a bit of decay. View of this uh, of this concept or what its intention is will come a little bit later, but it's important to to kind of add a little bit of that decay and, and demolished feel in these textures as well. So I, I grabbed a, another photo texture that I liked. And coming in here and using lasso and brush to, to mask uh, those areas that I, I don't want to show that texture in. It's nice to work with uh, the layer mask and uh, both using the texture brushes and lasso to, to get the things that I need to have nice and crisp. But, and also I can use a brush to, to get cool edges that I want as well. Uh, going a little bit faster here with these other ones. Uh, just want again to, to throw in things quickly. Again, using the smart objects makes it so easy to to adjust these over and over and over again until I find exactly where I want them to be. Don't have to be super precise here. This isn't an illustration. Again, it's a concept piece. It's not about making a pretty picture. It's uh, it's about getting the idea across. So, but it also needs to be clear. So playing around with with these here. As soon as uh, I get uh, the last of these in that I wanted, I'm going to rasterize these again, collapse them all into one, make sure they're all on a, the layer mode that I like. I think I uh, ended up here in overlay again. And adjusting the, the color and the, the value I need in order to get the effect that I want. So. Now, throwing uh, some more uh, of those textures in a variety of different places, cut and paste, throw them all over the place. With that done, it's now time to kind of to jump into the the noodling nitty gritty of the piece. The idea for this environment is that it's a city that's overrun uh, by desert, and uh, I wanted to go with kind of a I don't know, almost uh, Planet of the Apes type of thing. Uh, feel where this is a a world that's that's fallen apart, and these buildings here are just been overrun. So there's going to be a little bit of uh, fantasy element into this, uh, even though it's a a contemporary looking buildings here. So I'm creating a new layer here. I want to create the overall shape of all of the of this sand where I want to see this sand in the in the environment. So I'm going to cut in here with a lasso and put all these pieces in here for the sand. After I do that, I'm going to create new layers on top of that using the clipping clipping layer. to uh, add a new layer on top of this, uh, adding the, the values that I want, the, the color I want in here. What's nice about the clipping mask is it uh, allows you to you know, establish a, a, a shape, a very crisp shape uh, from the very beginning. And then as I paint on this layer, this 
clipping mask, clipping layer up on top of that previous layer, I can work within that, what feels like is working within that layer, and uh, I'll never break uh, the edge that I, I established uh, at the very beginning. So uh, it's a really nice tool that uh, I wish I had knew about uh, at the beginning of my career, and I did things very differently and slowly back in the day, but anyway, it's a great option. So coming in here now, found the colors that I liked overall, and so I'm trying to, to throw in the uh, lights and darks that I need in order to create form with this layer of, of desert in this city. Also realizing that, uh, you know, I need these buildings to match uh, the environment color wise i you know i need i need the different local colors that i that i used at the beginning of this but applying a color balance uh, to all of the buildings at once here at this later stage of the concept uh, i'm i'm still getting that variety of color from building to building but i can apply an overall tint that i need that will match uh, the, the environment we got a lot of you know, we got strong light coming and lighting the sand and that's going to create a lot of bounce light that's going to be reflected in those buildings as well so in addition to that uh, color balance I'm, I'm adding some more reds and yellows just to the base of the buildings as well At this point here I'm uh, playing around with some some texture brushes here to, to just add a little bit of tooth to the to the sand and the elements that are in there. This whole process here will fortunately being sped up to see it well you're seeing all of the noodling that, that goes into this uh, uh, painting process just make sure it gets right but uh, sped up so you don't have to be bored too much with it. Making sure the colors are consistent from each of the different areas and playing around with uh, more of these shadow shapes to make sure we get things right. Uh, I'm realizing as well, of course, that uh, while I'm adding, you know, more value and more form to the sand, I need to make sure that the, the buildings themselves are, are matching again. Uh, so I'm coming in here with a layer, uh, a new layer on top, a hard light layer, which is one of my primary options I use uh, when working in shadow to kind of create better form for these buildings. The hard light layer is a, is a fantastic uh, mode that I like a lot when I'm adding shadow to any form, whether that's uh, you know cast shadow or form shadow on, a, on an object. Uh, it allows me to, to apply color to those, uh, those shadows uh, in addition to just giving them, getting different values that I want. We're going to come to an end here at this first part here, doing these values on these buildings. But um, as soon as we're done there, we're going to we're going to take a quick break and come back here with some more uh, texture. Mm -hmm.